Today Baba says that I am the only one who teaches you how to die alive. And this is a very interesting thing that Baba teaches us and we Brahmins choose to die alive. Now I was just thinking about what dying alive means. So dying alive means so when when a person dies then they have a new body they have new relationships they have a new purpose they have a new life but we are still in the same body with the same people around us so how do we die alive so the method to die alive is changing our attitude towards everything in the old world. So the body is the same, but our attitude towards the body is not the same. The relationships are the same, but our attitude towards those relationships is not the same. We do the same job, the same work, but the attitude and purpose of doing it has changed. And uh, we, we live in this world, but the attitude towards what's going on and how do I respond to it, that has changed. And if it has not changed, it, it must change. So, you know, all these things, this transition, this is what we call dying alive. And um, you see, I remember there's this brother and he's a BK. And then he said, he, yesterday I was meeting him, he goes to some other center. He had just come from meeting. And then he told me that I don't feel interested in my business anymore. And uh, I feel like I shouldn't be doing this business. So I said, why? So he said, because there's no success in the business. So I said, what do you mean by success in the business? So I said, there's not enough profit and there is not enough money making in the business. So I told him, you are a BK for how many years? So I said, for 12 years now. So I said, do you go to office or do you go to work to earn profit? Or do you go to work because that's also part of your spiritual journey. So he said, I don't understand what you mean. So I said, you see, when Baba comes, he tells us that your context will remain the same, but your purpose should change. And what is our purpose now? Our purpose is to learn and grow and evolve. Our purpose is to use the platform, whatever platforms we have, whether it is the platform of the body or the platform of relationships or the platform of the work we do. But what is our purpose? Our purpose is to conduct ourselves knowledgefully, powerfully, lovefully and keep settling our accounts and in the process also evolving into a powerful soul. So that's the purpose. So I said, even if there's no profit, are you not learning from... So you see, you can't learn if you just sit in one corner of the room. So you can't learn by meditating. You learn by meditating and then putting that uh, power or that learning into practice. So you need a context to put all that into practice. Let's say we live in the center. 
Now we also, we also apply the learning that we receive through the Murli or the power and strength that we receive from yoga. We apply it into practice when we come into contact with souls or situations while doing seva. So that's the purpose. So when, so I told that brother, when you go for the business and you are with clients and you are with situations and you are with, you know, all that is going on. If you start applying knowledge and powers and virtues in that place, then you will slowly get be transforming into a knowledgeful, powerful and virtuous soul. And that is what is your purpose in Sangam Yoga. And you see, anyways, in Sangam Yoga, in the last phase of Kali Yoga, you cannot expect everything to, you know, give you good returns because there's a lot of karmic settlement involved. So sometime there'll be profit, sometime there'll be loss. And it is not connected with your performance as a businessman. It is just the way it is in drama right now. But you don't go to the shop or you don't go to the office for that. You are going with a different purpose. You are going to use that context to evolve spiritually by applying what Baba is giving you. And Baba tells us, when you understand this thing that my old purpose has died and what is my new purpose? My new purpose is that I see everything as a, as a platform to become experienced in Baba's knowledge, powers and virtues. And these are the platforms that we have. Why do we seek another platform? Sometimes, you know, people will say that uh, I don't want to live in the household. I want to live in the center. And I always tell them there are no sweets getting distributed in the center. It's the same thing. <laughs> so, you know, it's just another platform. It's just like you have a context of a family or a job. This is also a different context. It is the context of Brahmin souls and Seva. But in this context also, you have to do the same thing that you have to do in the household or in the or, prof or when you go for the professional pursuit. You have to apply the same knowledge, same virtues, same powers that Baba is giving you. And when you do that, then you will become that which you want to become and that is our purpose here so whether you use the logic platform or you use the alokic platform the platform changes the purpose doesn't and the with the purpose the attainment comes so you can attain that's why baba says whether you live inside or outside you can still become number one and that depends on how much are you committed to your purpose of learning and evolving spiritually? So Baba says that now you die alive. And I think you see that after giving the whole course, the most important thing that we share with everybody is that our purpose is to become a deity. So we have the per picture of the purpose and the purpose lakshya. That picture of the Laksh is Lakshmi Narayan. So that's our purpose. So Baba says, your old purpose was limited profit, gain or, you know, money or fame or something else. But now you understand that even if I get it, what's the use? It's all going to go away. Right? So it's all transient. So, yes, it will come. So, Baba says, you will get what you need and that I will ensure and that, had got, that has got nothing to do with what I do. But Baba says, when you, when you uh, take care of the body, are in relationships or you are handling a business or a job, you do that well, but with the purpose that 
you want to earn spiritual experience from it not uh, limited gain limited gain will come baba says according to the drama plan you are not meant to you know uh, stay hungry or <laughs> suffer so you will get what you need and i will make sure of it but you have to keep your eye on the real purpose that is important in the moment and similarly you see um i remember you know there was this one brother and he had major physical problems with the body so there were many problems in the body too many uh, illnesses and ailments and then he used to always have a very very smiling face and very um, positive attitude and he was always in a lot of zeal and enthusiasm and uh, you know when i came into gyan so at that time i felt this was very huge because i felt that you know if your body which which is closest to you and you're so attached to it if that body has some illness it's very difficult to stay happy and stay in zeal and enthusiasm because you're very attached to your body and i found that when i used to see that brother i used to really feel that this is amazing how can he do this and then one day i asked him uh, how do you deal with these illnesses and uh, how do you maintain your happiness in the face of these illnesses so he said i don't deal with it so i said but how can you stay happy when there are so many illnesses in the body so he said this body is nothing it's just a bag of five elements of matter and this is my instrument in sangam yog so my only relationship with the body is that i care take care of it and i do my purushart through it <laughs> i don't have any attachment to this body because this is just a mere instrument but i value this instrument i take care of it it's not that i i have a callous attitude towards this instrument i value it i take care of it but i take care of it because there's a purpose to it because i have to create my fortune by doing seva through it or you know a uh, sitting in meditation through it so that's my relationship with the body so even when it's not cooperating i don't feel sorrow i feel that you know i have to oil it a little or i have to do something to the body so that it cooperates with me so that's my relationship with the body so i don't have a love or s- sorrow relationship with the body the body doesn't make me happy the body can't take my happiness away so the body is just an instrument and we cooperate with each other so that i can do my sangam yogi purushat so i give my body good wishes and good thoughts and it also cooperates fairly well in sangam yoga so this is our relationship with the body earlier the relationship was of attachment so when we say dying alive so change in your purpose or shift in your attitude towards the body and then you see when a person dies then all his relationships change so the previous mother father brother sister spouse children they are not the same anymore right so baba says here also when you have died alive so everybody around you is just a brother soul to you now so your relationship your old relationships have changed into fraternal relationships so your mother in law is not your mother in law she is your <laughs> brother soul so when you start looking at her like that then you have a different relationship so baba says every relationship just have this attitudinal shift that this is a brother soul which i am interacting with 
and when you interact with a brother soul the trademark of that interaction is it is full of good wishes good feelings and respect so when that is what's going out from here from your end to that end then something similar will come back to you so baba says this is how you also by dying alive you settle your karmic accounts so you're in the same context but not with the same attitude so the attitude that created the karmic accounts has now shifted so now with this new attitude you are able to respond differently to the energy that's coming your way and when you are respectful and loveful and full of good wishes and good feelings despite any quality of energy that's coming your way you are able to settle that karmic account so baba says this is your attitude towards your the people around you when you die alive and then towards situations so what is your attitude towards the situations that are in and around you earlier you used to see them as success and failure gain and loss you know insult and praise but now you see them as scenes in drama <coughs> which don't mean anything yes so a scene in the drama is just a scene in the drama it doesn't mean anything so just stop interpreting situations so there are scenes there are things going on around you but stop finding meaning in them so you know stop labeling them interpreting them so you see you lost a contract stop looking at that as failure you you didn't clear an exam that's not failure that's just one scene in the drama so don't start interpreting something as success or failure even if you know things are going great don't label it as success it's just a scene in the drama and every scene in the drama is going to change in how much time one second so how much is the duration of one scene one second and that scene is not going to continue probably in the next second so why do you spend so much energy labeling and creating emotions in every scene it's just a scene in the drama there is somebody who talks ill about you who spreads bad name about you that's just a scene in the drama don't think i lost my honor i got defamed this happened and that happened nothing happened it's just a scene in the drama and that scene will change next moment so that's that scene is gone so you see that happened and it's over and now it's a different scene so that's how you look at everything in the drama and in the drama there is no need to interpret so even you know even when you are interacting with souls and there's somebody who said something to you which earlier you interpreted as an insult now you understand it's just a scene in the drama where they are saying the dialogues they are meant to speak and it doesn't mean anything for you <laughs> so that's how you change your attitude towards everything that's going on around you and baba says when you die alive in this manner when you have these attitudinal shifts only then can you make this journey of belonging to baba because you see in your old awareness you can't take inheritance from baba in this new awareness you can take your inheritance from baba and in this new awareness when you uh, start you know when you look at everything around you differently whether it's the body the purpose the relationships then you can make choices about stabilizing yourself in a soul conscious manner and remembering baba or choosing purity because until and unless this attitudinal shift takes place you are so caught up in the old world and your mind is functioning in such a different manner that you are thinking so much about the old world 
that you cannot do what Baba is asking you to do. So Baba teaches us how to die alive. And these are the thoughts that I had in the morning, so I shared. Now Baba also tells us today something very interesting. Baba says that people say that um, sages, holy men, great souls, advisors, wealthy people and the president etc. are the highest people. But that is not so. <laughs> so you see that in the world you see when we talk about elevated beings. So people will say these are also elevated people. And uh, you see there was somebody telling me that somebody is a judge in the higher court. So he is uh, he's an elevated person or you see wealthy people, sages or people who hold political positions. People think that they are great people. But until and unless we receive Jnana, we don't understand the difference between elevated and lowly. Elevated you don't become by what you have and what you do. It's not about the profession you are in or the property you have or the power you have. It's about the being that you are. And how do we know that a person is elevated? So you see, um, there are many people who say, I remember there was this uh, one person who told me that when you are an elevated person, it shows on your face. And I said, not necessarily. So not necessarily that you think that, you know, if your face is calm and, you know, there's, uh, there are many people who have this ego that maybe they can read auras through the face or something. But I don't agree with that. And I will tell you one, I'll tell you many, uh, many incidents in, on this journey which made me realize these things. So, you know, there was this one program once and uh, that was an event we had organized for uh, those of those who are uninitiated. They came for the first time. So, in that whole assembly, there was this one woman who was sitting at the back and she had this face like a deity and she had this smile which was, you know, very measured. <laughs> she was not laughing. She was not grim. She was in accurate measure. She was smiling all the time. Uh, she, her body didn't move. Uh, she was exactly, you know, what you would think is is a is an expression of um, you know elevated state inside out and I saw her and during the program just like you know you see men, uh, everybody one or two times I noticed her many times and then um, in the end when everybody came for the toli so uh, she kept sitting there and then she came in the end and then um, I asked her, uh, so she, she told me, um, she took the tolly and then she said, I want to talk to you for two minutes. So I said, yes, please, you can talk to me. I'm free now. So she said, I have, I am in acute depression and I couldn't hear even one word of what you spoke in the whole class because my mind was racing and I cannot focus and my hands and feet are all the time jittery so I keep them calm and I make an effort to keep them stable and when I heard that I was really shocked <laughs> and and I that day you know I felt that Sometimes you think that you can make out many things from somebody's, um, you know, the way they sit or the way they are, they, their expressions or something. But that myth got shattered that day. And I felt that you cannot really figure out anything about anybody until and unless they open their mouth and honestly share with you or you interact with them, live with them for a long time. 
So, it is very difficult to figure out who is who and that is what and this is why you know when people say we can figure out who is elevated, who is not, I do not agree with that. So, Baba says that you know people will say people who do great jobs or, an, or are in powerful positions or they have uh, you know accumulated knowledge of the world, they are all elevated people. But what is the real sign of being elevated? The real sign of being elevated is being viceless. So, are you viceless? So, do you have, so, um, so are you free from lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed? So, and it has got nothing to do with the power and position you wield or it has got nothing to do with your education or the degree you hold. But if you have worked on yourself and Baba says, I am the only one who can make you elevated. And the first sign of being elevated is you are viceless. And if you have wish, vices in you, if you are driven by lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed, you are, you are anything but elevated. So, Baba says, I am the only one who can make somebody elevated. And you see, there was this one brother, he came two days back and he said, um, my mother always tells me that you should go to the Brahma Kumaris and uh, my mother is a BK for 20 years. But I think that you know, you people can't teach us anything. So, I said, why do you think so? So, he said, because I am managing my life very well, I do not have any questions about my personal life or professional life, whatever challenges I am facing, I am facing it on my own and I am doing pretty well. So, why should I come to the Brahma Kumaris? Why should I come? Why does my mother keep telling me when I am managing my life very well without you? So, I told him that it is a good thing that you are managing your life very well without any help and most people are not able to do that. So, it is congratulatory. But the thing is that God has not come to solve our problems. God has come to make us realize what we can be or what we can really do and that is huge. So, I said maybe today you use uh, the power of logic or the power of experience to deal with problems. But when you come to Baba and fill yourself with knowledge, virtues and powers, then you do not deal with problems. You use those problems and as an opportunity for higher realization and learning. <laughs> so, you feel that you know those problems are not there to deal with. You feel that they are actually giving you a lot of experience, they are a blessing in disguise. And when you realize who you really are and what you are capable of, you do not look at the, at the world as a platform where you deal with problems, but you look at the platform as an opportunity for seva. You have a big heart and you start serving. Or you know, if you, talk, if you ask about my journey, I feel that spirituality opens the door to intuitive thinking and that intuitive thinking is very high. So, you see in the, in Satyug when we are elevated, we do not use our hands and our bodies to, uh, you know, uh, to, to operate with nature. You can operate with nature through thought power. You can operate with souls through thought power. So, elevated beings use thought power. Elevated beings use intuition power. You do not have to see and observe, you know. So, that is the kind of, that is the kind of elevated beings Baba is making us. In Satyug, you do not, this is why you know Baba says that now I am changing you into that elevated being. So, when I am changing you into that elevated being, just like I am the ocean of knowledge, 
I am giving you the knowledge of the beginning, middle and end of the whole world and I am also giving you the knowledge of the three worlds and based on this knowledge you even without observing anybody you know that this is a soul, you know that this soul has had a long journey and you know that they have four things. So they have a mind, intellect, original sanskar and acquired sanskar and you don't need to be hurt and you don't need to you know see those sanskars in order to know them. So Baba says I make you elevated, nobody else can make you elevated like me. And uh, this is something that Baba is saying so the all this is all for today.